In this video, we're just going to talk about the balancing of redox reactions using the oxidation number method. Okay, so if you've not watched the video now to assign oxidation number, do watch it. The link is in the description. So the first thing that you'd want to do is first of all identify what is necessary for you to balance in terms of oxidation states. So in this case, I'm able to see that iron is related to the iron on the other side. And then I'm able to see that carbon is also related to the carbon on the other side. Notice that oxygen is usually standard. And of course, we know it's oxidation state. So we have to observe the change in oxidation state of iron. Okay. And then also the change in oxidation state of carbon where it is existing. Okay. So let's start. So we'll look at this. We'll drop it there. So we don't know the oxidation state of iron in that compound. What are we going to do? We'll write the oxidation state. We'll say X. Let X denote what? Iron. How many do we have? We have two. So we're going to have two X plus 3. We have got 3 oxygen atoms. The oxidation state of oxygen is a minus 2. Equal to the net charge of a compound which is a 0. So we have 2x. 3 by minus 2 is going to be minus 6. Goes the other side becomes a plus 6. x is equal to plus 3. Okay, so in cases where you don't have enough time, just observe to say there's that 3 there which is on the oxygen is coming from the iron. Okay, so the oxidation state of iron in this case was 3. Okay, so we have a plus 3 for iron. On the other side, since it is existing in the elementary form, there is no charge there, so it's 0. Those are the rules of oxidation states. Carbon, quickly. So we don't know there. So we'll say, let x denote carbon. The oxidation state of oxygen is a minus 2. The net charge of carbon monoxide is a 0. So x becomes plus 2. So that is the oxidation state of, of our carbon there, plus 2. And then finally, carbon dioxide. Let x denote carbon. And then we've got two oxygen atoms with each a minus 2. The net charge of carbon dioxide is 0. So x becomes plus 4. So that is the oxidation state of carbon in that one. So plus 4. What do we do? So let's try to observe the changes in oxidation state. I'll start by observing first of all for iron. We are moving from plus 3 to 0. What's the change? The change is plus 3. 3 to 0, the change here is a 3. The other observation we can make is from 2 to 4. What's the change? 2 to 4, the difference is what? A 2. So that's our change. So what do we do now? So what we'll do is we basically get to multiply everything by the opposite charges so that we balance. Okay. So this 3 is going to apply to everything on the other side, on the other half part. So it is going to apply to the carbon monoxide and also the carbon dioxide. And then I also use the 2. The 2 now also apply to the other opposite side. It would apply to the ion, um, the first part and also the other part. Now, if you get to observe, notice that we already have two there, two iron atoms. On the other side, we have two. So we can't put the two there. So this is an indication that it's not every time that we get to consider the multiplying of the two there, or the opposite, uh, the opposite charges or the changes in the oxidation states. Okay? But if you observe for carbon monoxide, realize that it was necessary for us to apply the three to both the carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide because the number of carbon atoms are now balanced. Okay. So it will not the two will not apply to this first part because we already have two ion atoms. Okay. So what do we have now as balance equation? So what remains there is now your balance equation. Okay. That is how we basically get to go about it. Okay. So we're on the other question now to understand better on what we need to do and what we need to consider. So Look at this. Here we have copper. Hydrogen is standard, oxygen is standard, so observe we are more interested in copper and nitrogen. Since oxidation states of hydrogen and oxygen are known. Okay, so let's make an observation in copper first of all. As we check the other side, what do we observe? So copper here, first of all, in the first part, it is existing in its elementary form, so it has got an oxidation number of a zero. On the other side, 
by just observing that there's this two there, this is like I told you for iron. The fact that we add something like this. So when you're forming the formula of a compound, you look at the oxidation states. So it's an exchange of oxidation states. So there was a swapping like this. That's what I'm saying. The three there was denoting what? The oxidation state of your iron. So the same applies to what we have. The fact that we have a two there indicates that we had copper two plus exchanging with a nitrite which has a, has a charge of a minus one. Okay? So therefore we can say we have copper two. And then we can observe um, for nitrogen. I'll drop part, I'll have to make some calculations there. So we know hydrogen has got a charge of plus one, oxidation number of one. We'll put X to denote our nitrogen. We've got three oxygen atoms, each with a minus two, equal to zero because it's the charge with zero there. So we have X being equal to three minus three multiplied by a minus two give us a minus six. Minus six plus a one will give us a minus five because the other side becomes plus five. So there the initial oxidation state is plus five over nitrogen. We go to the other side. We have nitrogen dioxide. So X denotes nitrogen. We've got two oxygen atoms. The net charge of a compound is zero. So X becomes plus four. Right? So we've made an observation there. Okay, now that we've made the observation on the changes in terms of oxidation number, for copper we've noticed that there was a change of from zero to two, which was a two. Okay, and then for nitrogen we've observed there was a change of a one. So for nitrogen it's going to apply to the copper. We'll add the one and the one, and then for the nitrogen there was a change for copper there was a change of a two, which will now apply to the nitrogens, right? Okay, now. You also need to make some observations because it's not necessary that whatever you add is going to balance things up. Okay, so let me just try to to erase. So we'll start with copper. On the left hand side, you have a single copper. On the right as well, one. So balance. Hydrogen atoms. We have two there. We have two there. Balanced. Nitrogen. Two there. Two there. So here there are two, there we also have two, balanced. Oxygen, here you've got three times two, giving us six. The other side, three times two, you have six. Plus two times two, we have four more. The other side, you have a one. So you have six plus four, giving us 10 plus one, 11. So I have 11 on the left hand side, actually of 11 so that's basically not balanced what can we do to try to balance it up so observing that we have 11 the other side and then this other side we have 6 I think it would be much better if we try to double there so if we make it from 2 we can make it 4 so if you make it 4 you realize that we have 12 now on the other side so we are closer so here you have you now have 12 there you have 11 so we can only make it equal if we can multiply the order that is on the right hand side by a 2 so that you've got two oxygen atoms plus 10 making it 12 now that also balances up the number of hydrogen atoms since you now have four there you also now have how many do you have here Two times two gives us four. Now the nitrogen atoms, how many do we have? Here you realize that you have got two there. So I think this is a mistake that we made when counting for nitrogen. So nitrogen necessarily didn't basically balance up the time I was asking. So nitrogen on the left we had we had initially we had two. There we had uh four. Yeah, there we had four. So it was, ne it was necessary that we had to multiply. I can just redo that again. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, so if we try to observe nitrogen, here we have got two. The other side we have, so is it, we have two there, plus also two there, giving us four. So we have four nitrogen atoms on the left. So we can only balance if we can make it four as well this side. So I'll remove the two, so that it now becomes four as well. So we have nitrogen atoms. Now the moment we add that four, there will be a change to our hydrogen atoms. We now have four here. How about the other side? We only have two. So I'm supposed to add it to there to make it four. Now we've balanced the hydrogen and nitrogen. Let's observe oxygen. Oxygen here we have got four times three giving us a twelve. The other side, three times two is a six. Two times two is a four. And then there we have uh, two times one, that is uh, two. So six plus four plus two, that is also twelve. So we've now balanced the entire equation. The number of all the atoms on the left and the right hand side are actually balanced. So oxidation numbers give us a starting point and it makes things easier. If you try to balance the directory, it's going to be more complicated. So basically this is an introduction on how you get to balance redox reactions using the oxidation number method.